to demonstrate the VentLab hyperinflation system today. Um, a couple different style bags. We have a style with a integrated manometer. We also have a style that does not have an integrated manometer for those customers that choose that. I'm going to mainly focus on the one with integrated manometer, but I will tell you that the style that doesn't have the manometer built into it comes with oxygen tubing and will also come with pressure tubing to hook to an external manometer. I'll show the um, style without manometer first. Oxygen tubing, of course, attaches to the port that is uncapped, right? So that's our oxygen tubing connects there. It has a fits all connector on the end. So if your flow meter is missing a Christmas tree or small bore tubing connector, they're called, it will still fit onto the flow meter, just, uh, whether it has you know, the connector or not. So very important feature. And then you have your pressure tubing, which you would hook to your external manometer. This tubing actually connects to the uh, port here that was capped with that teal color capped, that teal color cap. So your pressure tubing will connect there. So then this, of course, would run to your external manometer. And once again, you'd have your, your oxygen tubing connected. And then our adjustment valve is positioned right there between the two ports. All right, so I'll show that style back first, but I'm gonna actually mainly do the demonstration with the, with the uh, bag that has the manometer built in. All right. So this is a half liter bag. Our bags come, you get them in a quarter liter bag, a uh, half liter bag, one liter, two liter, or three liter bag, and have the same valves built into. This is our, our uh, hyperinflation system with integrated manometer. All right. This manometer is the same style that we use on our manual resuscitators. So it's color coded green, yellow, and red, you know, to indicate safe working pressures. And of course, you know, yellow and red indicating you know, when you're getting to the higher pressures. Our bag you can also get with a extra safety feature, the 40 centimeter pop-off. All right, or you can do a 25 centimeter pop-off. The one that I have on this bag today is 40 centimeter, which is the most common. Um, it is active with the cap dangling out. You should be able to read the writing and see that it says active on it and see that it says 40 centimeters. So that pop-off would be active right now. If for some reason you need to override that pop-off and you know give the patient a higher pressure than 40 centimeters, then of course you would need to cap that pop-off like that. All right. But most of the time that's going to be dangling out. It should be dangling out so that it is active. All right. The adjustment valve is here on the side. Which I'll show you that in just a second. And then your oxygen tubing connector is right here, your oxygen tubing port. This teal port is just an extra pressure port, so it would stay capped because you really, you have an integrated manometer, not necessarily need to hook to an external uh, external manometer. But if you need to go hook up to an external manometer, you would uncap it here and hook pressure tubing there and run to your external manometer, all right? So I'm going to, uh, so one thing about our, our bag, and I'm, I'm gonna show you the adjustment wheel here on the side. So our valve actually, comes color coded when it's completely closed and it usually comes packaged that way you'll see that it has a red color in the valve there so I might not be able to see that well in the video but there's red color coding in there so as you turn that valve clockwise you actually open up the valve of course that would decrease the pressure that you're trying to deliver the patient turn it counterclockwise would close the valve and increase pressure all right our valve the opening in our valve tends to be smaller than some of the other competitors on the market. So actually our bag, we found that you can actually run it with lower flows as compared to some of the other uh, competitors bags. All right. So I'm actually going to start flow out with this half liter bag I'm using today. You could probably start somewhere from eight to 10 liters per minute. It's really up to the clinicians on uh, how they want to adjust flow. These are flow inflating bags, it requires a little more skill to use them. Um, you know, as, as you're using a flow inflating system or a hyperinflation system, they're called, it's always a combination of flow and how I adjust the valve as to what pressure I deliver to that patient. So you always want to adjust your flow so that I can deliver the pressure, I can deliver the PEEP, I can deliver the respiratory rate that I'm trying to deliver the patient. So you have to have enough flow and adjust that valve to where you can, you can achieve all those, all those things that you're trying to achieve with the patient. So I'm going to start my flow out at 10 liters per minute. First thing I'm going to do is, you know, of course, hook up my oxygen tubing. I'm going to take my hand and cover the uh, bag, cover the patient port so that I fill my bag. And then I'm going to preset. I always do this prior to putting it on a patient. So I want to actually open that valve 
can kind of preset, just kind of get some presettings in it as I'm using it. So I would actually at this point make sure the, the I'd squeeze the bag, make sure the manometer is functioning properly. And also at this point I can actually set peak, you know, where I want peak. So I would preset it. I don't know how well you can see that on the video, but all I'm doing is holding my hand over the valve, blocking off the patient port, and then setting my manometer at five five repeat right now. Okay. And of course, as you know, with flow inflating bags, the harder you squeeze, the more pressure you deliver. All right. So at this point, I will go ahead and hook it up to my patient. I'm gonna simulate that with my little test lung here. So I hook it on my patient. I'm going to have to readjust it again at that point. Anytime you put this on the patient, even though you preset it, all you did was preset it just to make sure your settings were safe to put on your patient at that at that point when you put it on your patient, you know, you're going to have to probably just do some minor adjustments to it. And because our wheel, the valve, the opening in our valve is small, you really don't have to make huge adjustments to make changes to the pressure. So now I've kind of set my hyperinflation system. I'm running at 10 liters per minute. I'm, I'm delivering a pressure of 20 centimeters and basically have a peak of five set, all right? Now, if I want to, and, and one thing to be aware of when you're using hyperinflation systems, as you squeeze the pressure, these are open, they're not closed systems, these are open systems. So depending on how you have your flow adjusted on the hyperinflation system, you might see your manometer drop below your peep setting. And that's okay, as long as your peep, your manometer, the needle on your manometer comes back up to the peep level that you have set prior to giving your next breath. That's really all you're wanting to achieve is peak end expiratory pressure, which is what PEEP is. I just need to have that PEEP, you know, like I said, the, the manometer come back to the appropriate PEEP setting prior to me giving the next breath. So if that's not occurring, there's a couple of different things. I can increase the amount of flow I'm giving to the bag, or I could tweak my valve and close it a little bit. But most, most likely at that point, I'd increase the flow on my bag. So I want to have enough flow to achieve that respiratory rate and also deliver the PEEP that I'm trying to deliver. All right, and, and the pressure I'm trying to lower, peak inspiratory pressure. So I think sometimes uh, folks are confused by that and think that it should just, the manometer should just drop to the peak level and stay there. And they don't always do that. I've seen some bags, if I probably increase the flow enough on this bag, it would probably do that. But really, flow inflating bags, you really only want to use as much flow as you need to achieve your settings that you're trying to achieve. There's really no reason to put excess flow into the bag because all you're doing is wasting oxygen for one thing and then that's also flow that that baby has to exhale against the more flow i put in the bag plus the more flow that comes out of the bag and it would have to exhale against that so use this use the flow that you need to achieve the settings that you're trying to achieve and then that's really all you need to do all right so you can see it at a fairly quick rate all right so you can see that on the manometer all right Okay. All right, so if I just want to do CPAP, of course, with the patient, then I would uh, open the valve up more, set a peep of, uh, sorry, CPAP of five, if I want to do that. Also, when you're doing CPAP, you don't always need that uh, excess flow because you're not delivering a respiratory rate or you're not delivering a peak inspiratory pressure. So at this point, honestly, I could reduce the flow on the flow meter and uh, achieve my CPAP with lower flow, okay? So that's probably the biggest thing about flow inflating bags that, that folks need to be aware of is that they're all different. They all do the same thing, but the, the valves are all different in them. So it might take more flow to operate one competitor's or one manufacturer's bag uh, versus another. And like I said, with ours, we tend to have a smaller opening in our valve, so we're able to achieve you know, the settings and do the things that, that you need to do with your patient, usually with a little bit lower flows. All right. So, you know, on this half liter bag, of course it's a half liter bag, quarter liter bag, you're really gonna adjust your flow also to probably the size of your bag. So quarter liter bag, I can probably run my flows less than 10 liters per minute. You know, a half liter bag, I might run it anywhere from eight to 10, 12 liters per minute. But as you start increasing the size of the bag, one liter, two liter, three liter bag, then I need to run my flows 12, you know, 15 liters per minute because it's a bigger bag to fill and I'm going to be giving a larger volume to that patient, so you'll want that bag to fill fill faster, and you have, of course, more volume to fill in the bag. So you would run those larger-style hyperinflation bags at a higher higher flow. 
All right, so that's actually the hyperinflation system for flow inflating back from VentLab.